What's up everybody and welcome to part 12 of my basics of deep learning series. In the previous video, we left off at the point where we wanted to determine the partial derivative of the mean squared error with respect to weight matrix one. And this is what we're going to do now. So here again is the formula for that. And actually here, uh, there's not much new going on. Those first two expressions, they are the same as in this equation. So we can actually just uh, keep going uh, through the chain rule from this point onwards. And then uh, those last two expressions, they are technically the same as the last two expressions of this equation. So this here is partial derivative of O out with respect to O in. So it represents the movement from here to here. And this here is then the partial derivative of H out with respect to H in. So it's the movement from here to here. So those two expressions represent the movement backwards through the nodes. In other words, they are the derivative of the sigmoid function. And we already know how to determine that derivative. So edge data is going to be calculated like this. And then here, this last expression, the partial derivative of O in with respect to weight matrix two. So this is the movement from here to here to the weights. And the partial derivative of, of Hn with respect to weight matrix 1 is then the, the, uh, the movement from these nodes to the weights here. So those expressions represent the movement from uh, the nodes to the weights. And if you look again at the formulas for the feedforward algorithm, then we can see that those partial derivatives are actually just the derivative of a matrix multiplication. So accordingly then, uh, the partial derivative of h in with respect to weight uh, weight matrix one is simply x because x is the opposite corresponding element of weight matrix one. So then to calculate the update for weight matrix one, we're simply going to use the transpose of x and multiply it with uh, h delta. So the only new expression really is this one, the partial derivative of o in with respect to h out. So it's the movement from here to here, so from one layer to the other. So this is something that we haven't seen before, but it's also not, also not really new because, again, this partial derivative is just uh, the derivative of a matrix multiplication. So since the co uh, opposite corresponding element of H out is weight matrix two, then to calculate H error, we simply have to multiply O delta with weight matrix two. And how we exactly do that? Uh, we, therefore, we're gonna have to again look at the scalar notation for those functions here. So here they are. And up until this point, we were only concerned with this part of the neural net. And now, however, we have to consider the whole neural net. So we also have to uh, write these notations, uh, these equations here in scalar notation. Therefore, we need some more space. So let's get rid of the neural net for now. And then let's space out the equations some more. And now to calculate uh, hn1 of example one, so this point here, therefore we simply have to calculate the dot product of these x values and the respective weights that lead to this node. And to calculate then in a similar way h in, we use again those x values, but then the weights that lead uh, to the second node here. And those calculations we do again for the second example. And then to calculate the outputs of the hidden layer, we simply put those hidden layer inputs into the sigmoid function. So those are now uh, all those equations that we need to consider. And if we now want to determine, for example, the partial derivative of the mean squared error with respect to weight one one of weight matrix one, then we have to again use the multivariable chain rule. So let's then to use it or to apply it, let's again uh, represent those equations here with such a tree diagram. And since there's not much new going on in these equations, I've already did that and this is what it looks like. And as you can see, 
uh, it's actually so big that I couldn't uh, depict all the branches. So I just depicted the branches of the first example. But the branches for the second example, they look basically the same, just with a superscript of two instead of one. Okay, so now uh, to determine this partial derivative, then uh, therefore we have to consider those three paths. And then when we want to write out uh, the partial derivatives for this first path, they look like this. So also not uh, nothing new going on, so just the partial derivative of the mean squared error with respect to O out 1. This we multiply with the derivative of O out 1. Then we multiply that with the partial derivative of O in 1 with respect to H out 1. That we multiply with the derivative of H out 1 and then finally we multiply that with the partial derivative of h in 1 with respect to weight 1, 1. In a similar way, we can then write out those two other paths. And now uh, to see what those expressions actually look like, uh, there's also not uh, really new, something new going on because uh, we basically already know how to determine all those different partial derivatives. Those blue ones here are the derivative of the cost function, the orange ones are the derivative of the sigma function, and the green ones are the derivative of, uh, of the dot product. So let's now just quickly write out uh, those expressions here. So those first two we have, we've already done before, and they look like this. And those we have to then multiply with the partial derivative of O in with respect to h out 1, so uh, o in 1 with respect to h out 1, and the opposite corresponding element of that is going to be weight 1 1 of weight matrix 2. Then in the next step, we multiply that with the derivative of h out 1, which is then simply h out 1 times 1 minus h out 1, and then in this last step, we have to determine the derivative of h in 1 with respect to weight 1 1, of weight matrix 1 and this opposite corresponding element is simply x1. And in this way we can also write down those other two expressions. And then uh, obviously we, we would also have to consider the same expressions for uh, our second example. But since we don't have here any space anymore, we're just going to consider example 1 and that's now uh, our final equation. And let's rewrite it again in a more general way with sigma notation. So let's factor out this 1 over n again. And then here we're going to simply run then the sigma over all examples e. So this is now uh, the equation, how we can determine the partial derivative of the mean squared error with respect to weight 1, 1. And with that now we can understand how we should multiply O delta with weight matrix 2. And to really do that, we're going to rewrite this function a little bit. And the first thing that we're going to do is that here, those last expressions, they are always the same. So we can factor them out. And then also what we're going to do is those expressions here, they represent those first two steps. So we can rewrite them as O delta 1, 2, and 3. And this now here really is the part that we are interested in because we want to know how we should multiply O delta with the weights of weight matrix 2. This last part here, uh, we have already we already know how to uh, transform them or transfer them to the matrices, so we're not really interested in that. So uh, now this is the equation for one weight. So now let's also write down the equation for another weight. And we're not going to choose one of those weights here. And that's because if you would do that, then only in this function, the only thing that will change is this last one here. Because the path is the same for those examples. So for, if you would then, for example, choose this weight, then simply x1 would be x2 and so on. So since we are interested in this part of the equation, what we're going to do is instead of going to the left here, we're going to go to the right and then we're going to simply pick one of those weights here, which uh, in this case is weight 1, 2. So if we then write out the formula for this partial derivative, 
then it looks like this. And here we are again using old data 1, 2 and 3 because uh, up until this point the path is the same. And then however we go to the right, so we have to determine here the partial derivative of O in 1 with respect to H out 2. So with respect to H out 2. So this is then the opposite corresponding element. And the same kind of reasoning applies to those other two paths. So that we have weight 2, 2 and weight 2, 3. And then, uh, just to explain the rest of the formula, then we have to take the derivative of H out 2. So that's why we have here H out 2. And then here at the end, at the last step, we have again x1 because this weight also comes from uh, x1, uh, from the node 1 in the previous layer, like this one did. So those are now the two equations that we can use to understand how we should multiply O delta with weight matrix 2. So therefore, let's now go back to this overview diagram. And here are those equations. And what we want to do here on this first one is we are going to consider O delta 1, 2, and 3 of a specific example. So if we look at example 1, for instance, then we are looking at these values here, O delta 1, 2, and 3 of example 1. And then we also have to consider uh, these particular weights. So weight 1, 1, 1, 2, and 1, 3. So those are these values here weight going from one uh, from node 1 to node 1, 2, and 3. And what we want to calculate here is we want to multiply this value times this. To that we add this value times that, and then we add this value times that. So basically, we just want to calculate the dot product of this row and that row. And if we look at this neural net, what we want to calculate is this value times this weight plus this value times that weight plus this value times this weight. So we are adding together those three paths and the result of that will be H error one of example one. And this calculation we want to do for all of our examples to get these other H errors. So we also want to calculate the dot product of this row with that row and this row with that row. And intuitively, and this is then obviously then accordingly h error 1 of x uh, example e. And intuitively it makes sense that you would calculate or make these calculations in this way because at this point here uh, in the chain rule, so we are at this step here, what we want to know is how does the mean squared error change if we slightly increase h out. So what would happen, for example, if we slightly increase the output of this node here? And since such an increase wouldn't have an effect on the mean squared error over this path, this path, and that path, it makes sense that you have to add up uh, together those three paths if you want to know how a slight increase in this uh, node affects the mean squared error. And if that reminds you of the multivariable chain rule, then that's no coincidence because that's basically what it is. Okay, so that's uh, what we do here on this first equation. In the second equation, we are again looking at O delta 1, 2, and 3. So if we are looking at again at example 1, then we're looking at these values. But this time we are looking then at these weights. So 2, 1, 2, 2, and 2, 3. So this is this second row. So again, then, we want to calculate the dot product of this row and that row. So in the neural net, what we want to calculate is this value times this weight, this value times that weight, and this value times this weight. And the result of that will be then uh, h error 2. And again, we do that for all of our examples. So also we want to calculate the dot product of this row with the second row and this row with the second row. So to recap, uh, what we do to calculate these h errors is we basically just want for each row in this uh, matrix we want to calculate the dot product with each row in this matrix and this again sounds a lot like a matrix multiplication and in fact if we take the transpose uh, of weight matrix 2 then 
we can calculate or we can multiply this matrix with that one to calculate exactly those dot products. So to calculate our H error here, we simply have to calculate or multiply O delta with the transpose of weight matrix two. So those are now all the equations that we need to calculate the update for weight matrix one. So let's do that now. So first we're gonna multiply O delta with the transpose of weight matrix two to get H error. Then in the next step, we're gonna element wise multiply this matrix with H out and with one minus H out. This gives us then H delta. And then in the last step, we're gonna uh, multiply the transpose of our input matrix with H delta to get, and then uh, divide by N to get the weight matrix one update. And then to uh, execute one gradient step, we simply multiply this matrix with our learning rate and then subtract it from our initial weight matrix. And to do a full gradient descent step, we obviously do that for both of our matrices. And that's now uh, one iteration of the feed forward and the back propagation algorithm. And since we've already implemented the feed forward algorithm in code, what we're now going to do is to implement the back propagation algorithm. And this will be the topic of the upcoming video. So thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.